In this video, I'm going to be talking about the fantastic site called Bandcamp, which is amazing for musicians. So let's get started. Hey everyone, this is Barry from Music Tech Info. I like to cover all things for musicians, such as AI, music NFTs, and also other services that may help. And one of those other services is known as Bandcamp. Now, Bandcamp is a fantastic platform for musicians to be able to sell their music. There's no barrier of entry. It's incredibly easy to upload music on there and to create yourself up as an artist and an account. And then you can actually make sales from your music. Uh, you can include merch, you can do live streams now. So there's so much I wanted to explore. I probably won't cover absolutely everything in this video, but if you really wanted to check out more information, you can go to bandcamp.com forward slash guide. And in here, there's loads of promotion, merchandise, tips for community, lots of stuff in here to check out. So let's get started. So the idea is for Bandcamp is that this is a really successful platform. There's a lot of people on here that are looking for new music and are kind of not really happy with the streaming services such as Spotify. So what that enables them to do on here, if they follow an artist, then they'll be notified when there's a new release. There's also charts on here. On the main page of bandcamp.com further down, you'll see what they've currently paid, which is over $1 billion that fans have actually directly paid artists using Bandcamp. And just in the last year alone, $185 million. These are the tracks that are selling right now. And, and what I really like to see is this is like a live view of this. So you can see as I scroll down, it kind of updates and it will continue to update. So literally you can see things that have been selling, what country they've sold in, etc., etc. There's a curated page to begin with. So you've got new and notable titles to check out. You've got something called Bandcamp Daily. There's also a Bandcamp Daily sign up that you can put in, which is delivered every Friday. They've also got an app as well. What I really like is that they utilize all of the different genres on here. There's a lot of genres to check out and it goes further than that. So for example, I'm known as Cyber Monday. I do synth pop, synth wave music. So my music is very electronic orientated. And as soon as you click on electronic, you then get more subgenres to actually check out. So I can scroll to the right here and straight away I can see Synthwave is on the right hand side. If I click on Synthwave, I'll only see those Synthwave options, which is really helpful for people and fans interested in that kind of music. This is then the chart specific. So you're looking at the best sellers straight away. There's 200 pages to check out. But what I like to check out, if you're up to date with everything, you can click on new arrivals and then you'll only see the new arrivals that's actually available. There's also something called Artist Recommended. And this is more interesting because you can choose what format you want to consider to listen to or to buy. So there's digital, which is the obvious one. But there's also vinyl on here. There's compact disc and there's cassette. Now, remember, we're only looking within that synthwave genre at the moment of new arrivals. If I go to best selling, then you'll see the best selling cassettes that are currently available the best-selling compact discs, the best-selling vinyl. So this is just a great way to explore music really quickly and to be able to check them out. So for example, let's check out a release. So let's check out this one. Oh, this is a nice front cover of the PlayStation 1, which I like to see. So you can click on that and you'll be presented with the album. And this is how the view is for an artist page, if you like. So you're able to follow the artist over here you're able to see and contact directly if you want to, all of the links relevant to the artist. You've got the title, you've got the actual track to check out. I mean, these are very, very short tracks. This is uh, just an example. You've got a description of the album down the bottom. These are the tags at the bottom. So if you're a musician and you want to release a new album, remember that you can add tags to that. That's really helpful. And then what you can see is all of the people that have purchased that album, which is great to see. So two, four, six, eight. yeah, I thought it was 10 uh, artists per row. So this person has had a lot of sales. Let me just see. So this is a free album, but you can name your price, which means that if you feel that it's worth more than free, then you can obviously donate more. You can send as a gift if you want to, but if I click on buy digital album, let's say one pound, I can then buy that. I could say zero, but then it will say if you pay 50p, then what you'll get is you'll get in limited mobile streaming and you'll be directly supporting the artist. Or you can download for free, 
which is fine. Some artists may ask for you to put in your email address so that they can keep you up to date, which I think is fair if it's a free download, but that's an idea of that. So that's the latest album. You can also see the discography of the artist by clicking on more releases on the right, and then you'll see all of the releases that that artist has currently done, which I like to see. What you can also see is the merch section, and you can see ones that are available. So there's a vinyl available, a mini disc for available, a CD for available as well, and any that have sold out will be shown as sold out. And then in terms of the community section, you're able to send a message to follow the artist to see all new releases and messages that the artist may have sent via Bandcamp. So I, I just love how this works. Now, as a user, if you sign up, it doesn't cost anything. Also, it doesn't cost anything as an artist to put your music up. They take a commission, which is a revenue commission, and you can check out what that is on Bandcamp. You can search for an artist, album, or track. And what I can put in here is synth pop. If I see at the bottom, you've got music tagged with synth pop. I use this a lot. And then you've got all synth pop releases, then you can go to whatever you want. So you could go to Surprise Me. You could go to specific locations if you wanted to. You can um, filter it by a particular format as well. Again, you can go further into it like 80s. So it's just a fantastic way to browse music. You've got the notification bell for any new releases. You've also got this lightning strike, which if I click on, this is your own music feed. So you'll discover new releases from artists and genres that you actually follow and recent purchases from the fans that you follow as well. So you can see all of the people that you follow, what their activity is. So if they're buying an album, you like that person, chances are you might like that music too. So you can check that stuff out as well. So now let's now that we've explored Bandcamp, let's have a look as from an artist perspective. So if it's the first time as an artist and you want to put your music on here, which I think is a great decision to make because let's be honest, streaming services don't really offer much these days. You need to have billions of streams to be able to earn much money. And you know, Bandcamp is just a great way for you to charge what you want for your music. It doesn't cost anything to go on to here, and there's people actively seeking new music on here as well. In fact, I know a few DJs that do a radio show, say on Mixcloud, that will actually specifically dedicate themselves to Bandcamp to find out new releases before they even hit streaming services. Plus, there's a lot of music now, particularly my new strategy, is actually putting music up on Bandcamp and potentially NFTs without actually putting it on DSP. So maybe you put the singles on the DSPs for Spotify, and then actually the album will be only available on Bandcamp and NFT editions. So that's what I'm currently looking at at the moment. Now to sign up as a new artist, you click sign up on the top right, and then you can sign up as a fan, you can sign up as an artist, and you can also sign up as a label. Now there is a Bandcamp Pro version, which if you're a label and you're uploading an awful lot of music, then you might wanna consider doing this because it makes tags and uploads a lot easier. If you don't have the Pro, then you can only upload one track at a time. So it's something to bear in mind. But you go on to sign up as an artist, and it gives you a lot more information, such as selling right now, um, they've been 14 years in the business. I've used them for a very long time. I've had a lot of success with Bandcamp. I've released floppy disks on there, CDs, cassettes, vinyl, you name it. USB sticks, the list goes on and on. And they talk about artists first. They believe that music is essential to humanity and the welfare of the artist is paramount. The proof is in their business model. When the fan buys something on Bandcamp, an average of 82% of the money goes to you and the remainder covers our revenue share. Now that might be subject to change in the future. That's something to bear in mind as well. You generally wait like three months to be paid from DSPs, whereas Bandcamp is pretty much within the same week. It's so quick. Plus you've got direct communication with your fans that you can message them directly or you can message them all in bulk. You can select, say, from anybody that supported me, send out this message and they'll, they'll receive it, which is great. Artist accounts are free. They make money through 10% revenue share on merch and 15% on digital music, including the processing fees as well. And it typically goes to your PayPal within one to two days which is great. There's no advertising, they do chart reporting, so there's just so many benefits to look into. So 
What you can then do is you can click on sign up and then you'll just complete out the form. So you put in your artist band name, your username, password, email, confirm, and then you can start to actually build up your page. Now, once you've done that, you'll then need to create your profile of which you can click edit profile on the top right. And then you can start to upload your images. You can start to put in your releases as well, which is great. You can say what your genre is and there's just lots of settings to sort out and kind of look into. Streaming is a really good option actually because you can actually limit the amount of streaming that one user can have. So let's say that all of a sudden they, they listen to a track say more than three times and they'll be asked to buy it which I think is a fair income and it's something to consider as well. Now as an artist once you've set up your page you've got your dashboard okay. So any new followers you'll see, any sales you'll start to see as well and Bandcamp is fantastic at looking at statistics. You can see this is where you send messages to your followers if you want to, so that is your dashboard. Any orders you get, you'll be notified via email, particularly the merch orders, digital is, is automatic. You've also got statistics here, where you can actually see all of your streams, all time if you want to, and you can see the sources of, of how they found your music, so this is direct, is 30%, which is cool. There's also a map on here. So yeah, there's just so much to check out. There's also a fan club that you can actually set up, which just basically means that you, maybe your entire discography is available to the fans and you can actually choose what you want to include in your back catalog. You can select the fan club only releases and then you can actually set a price. So I'm gonna put them down as three pounds per month. You can give a thank you. There's just so much flexibility and control via Bandcamp. And then you'll see what they see and then how to join, which I think is fantastic. Now, if we have a look at the ad section now, this is where we can add an album. We can add a track, which is a single. We can add merchandise and we can even set up a live stream. So let's have a look at the album here. So setting up a new album, what you'll do is you'll put in the album name, how much you wanna charge for it. If it's free, you'll put in zero. If you want them to download for free but ask for email addresses, then you can select that one. You can have the upload album art on here as well. Now you have to remember, this catches me out a lot of times, you have to resize your album image art if it isn't enough quality to 1400 by 1400 pixels. That catches me out every single time. If it's multiple artists, you can include that information. You've got the description of the album, the credits, and the tags it will remember if you put that in your profile, but you can add extra ones for this album if you wish. You've got the UPC EAM code and the catalog number. Then what you'll start to do is you'll start to upload your tracks. Now you can upload lossless, wave format, AIF or FLAC. Let's just actually do one just so that you see what goes on. So if you don't have Bandcamp Pro, then this is what you'll have. You can't click on a new track unless the previous one is finished, okay? So it has to upload all the way to the right. And what you're able to do, you're then able to change the track specific information. So if you wanna enable the individual track purchase, you can keep that ticked or you can take that off. You can put in the lyrics if you want to, the credits. There's just so much to this. But the main thing is, a lot of this stuff is, is optional, so you don't have to put it in. And then you'll give the track a name, and then you literally save as a draft. Now the publish function at the bottom is really important. So if you want it to go straight to your fan club members and to the, to the Bandcamp world, if you like, you know, then you can leave it as public. And instantly that will be put live. It's not like DSPs where you have to wait for a release to come through, it's instant, okay? If you want to keep it private just to yourself, but also to people that have a link, then you can do that and actually purchase some link codes, download codes, or maybe just for your fan club only, this is a specific release for that. And then you'll build it up and then you'll literally click save draft and then you can publish that in the future. If I have a look at my site now, just to tell you the kind of stuff that I've got on here. Now what you'll see, I've got a selection of singles on here. These are four singles that I've released, well five actually. You've got albums on here as well. Now I put dash single just so that it's easy for people to know. There's nothing worse for me than finding, say, what I think is a single on, on Spotify and then you click on it and it's actually an album. And I think if I didn't click, I wouldn't have known and I wouldn't have checked out all of those tracks. It's just food for thought. So yeah, so this is all of the releases that I've ever done as Cyber Monday. 
So you've got compilations on here, you've got album tracks on here, I've got cover albums on here as well. And then down the bottom, these are the private ones that I've got. And you've got some fan club ones, which is known as fan club exclusives on here as well. So only the people that join the fan club will get access to those ones. And as you can see, I've worked hard on this. I've got keyboard demos, instrumental demos, covers, you know, the list goes on and on. I've got these bonus album tracks as well that I've been working on. So when you release an album, there's just so much con different tracks that you've got, like instrumentals, remixes, different versions, demos. And I like to collate all of those and actually put those up as special releases. What there also is, is merchandise. Just to give you an idea, I've got USBs on here, 640 tracks. I've got floppy disk on here. I've got CDs available. I've got vinyls that were there, but they've sold out. You can put t-shirts on here. The list just goes on, which is just amazing. If you go to bandcamp.com forward slash guide, then there's a lot of information on here, but also how to be a bit more discovered. And one of the ways that you can get more discovered is to get more followers. Now followers will be notified of future releases and messages. There's direct links on here, so you can get followers via Facebook here, get followers via Twitter, you can add a follow button to your website, which is great. And it gives you the HTML to copy that into your website. You can also share this link called follow underscore me and put it in your bio on platforms. You're able to also customize your site as well. There's design tutorials on this website forward slash guide if you wanna see how to do that. There is just so much to this. And I just feel that this just really gives artists more control because if there's anything you want to change on your releases, straight away you can make that change. You can just go to edit, change the title, change the picture, or you forgot to upload a track, you can go back in and do that. But I just think Bandcamp is incredibly powerful. It says here that digital music is still really important, but merch has been growing exponentially. For example, vinyl sales are up 438% in the past five years. Cassettes, 232%. T-shirts, 250%. To date, fans have purchased 23.1 million merchandise items through Bandcamp alone, totaling 411 million US dollars. That just shows the power of this platform. If I really wanted to see improvements with Bandcamp, what I would probably suggest, because I know a lot about music NFTs and what those platforms offer, would be to have limited editions on here. It's not something that's easy to set up on digital releases. Very easy on merchandise, because you can say how many t-shirts you've got in stock. And once that reaches zero, it's sold out. But I really feel that Bandcamp needs to jump on the bandwagon now, literally, and start to introduce music NFTs on the platform, if not purely digital limited editions. So there you have it. Hope this video helped you. Feel free to put in the comments any questions you might, might have. Please consider subscribing to my channel if you haven't already. I cover so many different aspects of tools and strategies for musicians, such as music NFTs, artificial intelligence is incredible now and can actually really help, help with your strategy. And I'll speak to you on the next video. Take care. Bye.